Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna work on a new accelerometer sensor that is MXC six two three two XL. Now we have been working on a different digital accelerometer sensors. Let's add a new one to that list. So to gain more knowledge about this sensor, we have to visit the website that is controleverything.com and here we have to search for this sensor that is MXC six two three two XL. Now we can say that it's a low power plus minus 2G dual axis accelerometer and these are x y axis 8 bit acceleration AD output plus minus 2G some of its features as you can see on my display. Now you can also purchase the sensor from here you can add to cart here. Today I am gonna interface the sensor MXC6232XM dual axis accelerometer with the Raspberry Pi and I require a Java code. So let's have a look over the resource tab and here comes the Java code sample we are looking forward to explore. We can download the code as a zip file from here, the link is here. Also you can download the code from github repository that is control everything community. Now let's have a look over the hardware required and let's make some connections regarding that. First of all in the connection segment we require our sensor that is MXC6232XM. Now this here is a Raspberry Pi and these are the GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi as you see. Now we want to make a connection among the sensor of the Raspberry Pi, other I2C devices and this connection should be a lot easier. That's why the answer is this, an I2C sheet, which you can purchase from the website controleverything.com. Gently place this I2C shield over the GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi and make a connection. Now to power up the Raspberry Pi we need a micro USB cable just like this. Gently insert it over the power jack. Now to make a connection among the sensor and the shield we need a connecting cable just like this and gently insert it and while making this connection make sure that the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor and similarly we have to follow this rule for the I2C sheet. Now the final step is to make an internet connection and for that there are two steps. The first step is an ethernet cable which you are able to see on my screen and you can gently insert it over the ethernet jack. Second you can have a wireless nano USB adapter which you can insert it on the USB port and you can have your way out for the internet connection. So we are done with the connection spot. What do we require is our port so that we can interface and work out with our sensor. So now we need a Java code so that we can have a look over the interfacing and the working. So for that we have to log into the github.com website and here we have to search for the repository that is control everything community. It's the official repository of control everything.com. Now here we have to search for the sensor that is MXE6232 and here we go. Yeah, that's correct. And this is a Java code. We would love to explore. But before that, let's have a look over the instructions we need to follow to pursue this code. It says that we have to download and install Pi4J library on the Raspberry Pi. And this is the link, pi4j.com, where all the relevant information regarding the installation, commands, uh, everything is there. Easy, preferred, offline manuals, as you can see on my screen. Everything is there. You just need to note it down carefully and do it. And this is the command to compile the Java code and this is to run the Java code. Note it down and get back to the Java code as you can see it's a .java extension file. First thing you will note down in the code that it says that we have imported uh, some of the libraries and we have created a class named mxc6232xm. Now we have the address of the device that is 0x10 and we have bus.get device to achieve that address. Now comes the writing part where we have to send the command and it says that we have to set up the acceleration to begin reading and the command is here as you can see 0x00. After that reading uh, we have to reading part that says that we are going to read 5 bytes of data including status and acceleration for x and y axis. Then we have the conversion of the data takes place which we have done according to the formalities we have to do for the data sheet of MXC6232XM. At the very end of our code, we have to display the results on to the screen, which is in the form of acceleration in X and Y axis, and the raw values are there. So it's a very general code as you can see. Now what 
we want to see is the working of this code alongside the Raspberry Pi. Let's watch it. Now for a well interesting part, uh, copy this entire Java code and open up the terminal regarding the Raspberry Pi via internet and here create a new file mxc6232xm for the reference.java is the header file as you can see um, extension file and paste the code here save it and this is the command to have as you can see 6232 to compile it and here we go the code is compiled now this is to run the java program now we have the data for acceleration in x and y axis again as you can see there is a very slight movement in the x y perpendicular axis as the stability of the sensor now when i try to move it there will be changes regarding the x and y axis as you can notice it is changing continuously and when i'm moving rotating the sensor it's on the screen now so this is how the sensor alongside the java code works with the raspberry pi now what do we require is to see the benefits the features for the sensor and let's see what are the reasons why we use this sensor in a lot of applications? The MXE6232XM is a low cost dual axis accelerometer fabricated on a standard submicron CMOS process. It is a complete sensing system with an on chip mixed signal processing and integrated I2C bus, allowing the device to be connected directly to a microprocessor, eliminating the need for A to D converters or timing resources. The sensor measures an acceleration with a full scale range of plus minus 2G and a sensing of 512 counts per G at the rate 3.2 volt at 25 degrees Celsius. It can measure both dynamic acceleration and static acceleration. This allows to be used in a lot of applications like information appliances, for example, cell phones, PDAs, computer peripherals, consumer appliances like LCD projectors, pedometers, blood pressure monitors gaming appliances like joystick, RF interface, alongside GPS appliances like electronic compass tilt correction and a lot more. Now you can purchase the sensor from the website controlleverything.com as you can see and you can have the code from the resource tab. Afterwards you can download it from there. Also you can have the code downloaded from the repository from website github.com and its control everything community. In the end, I would like to make it clear that in case you guys are in a kind of feeling like you are left without fully understanding any part of this video or any part of the code, you can have your further queries on controleverything.com. You can contact it there. Also, you can post your comments on the community page here. Now, for articles, blogs which are relevant to this sensor or video, you can have a check on instructables.com and if you want to subscribe more video tutorials, like this you can subscribe our youtube channel i hope you enjoyed this video and you are waiting for further more videos which you will get thanks for watching